do you think that we'll see gold-backed currencies? I hope so, because um, uh, I actually, actually, I would rather have them use gold than a gold-backed currency. When you go on a gold standard, it just opens the door again for this whole scam to start all over again. If you right. are paying for things in grams of gold or nanograms or whatever it takes, anybody that says there's not enough gold doesn't know fundamental economics. That they actually, if they say there's not enough gold, they don't know how to do division. I mean, <laughs> if you look at the number, you could give every atom of gold in a gold, a single ounce of gold, a serial number that could be put in a vault, and as long as it's this one stable thing uh, and and uh, you have a number that is not something that a government can expand at, or contract at any moment and it's not something that's borrowed into existence and then vanishes as it's being paid back uh, that could be used and there would be more uh, units of currency than currently exist on the planet with just the one ounce however if you were doing that with just one ounce uh, the amount of work and time and effort put into mining that one ounce wouldn't equal the amount that that one ounce would buy. Gold and silver are honest money. They're not just, you know, um, we're not just talking about sound money. We're talking about honest money because there's no fraud and theft involved. With fiat currencies, there is fraud and theft. Every transaction, you know, with, with gold, the amount of time and effort to dig it up, mine it, refine it, mint it into a coin, and uh, then buy something with it, the, it's an equal trade. You're trading something for something. With fiat currency, when you borrow currency into existing, uh, existence by saying, here's this house I found, I want to borrow a million dollars, and the bank uh, imagines a million dollars worth of IOUs into your account, you pay the seller with those IOUs, it's a trade of nothing for something, and that's fraud and it's theft. I want to wrap with this, with the with the few minutes we have left, Mike, I, I started by saying your first book came out in, in 08. You know, now you're out with this book, 2023, obviously a labor of love. Um, and you've obviously accumulated, accumulated uh, a lot of knowledge along the way. Just, you know, is there some one thing that's stuck out for you that you learned in your journey here that you can share with us? Wow. <laughs> uh, well, the main thing that stuck out more than first uh, ben Bernanke did not let the markets clear in 2008. If they had let things just find a bottom yeah. without papering over it, we wouldn't be in the trouble that we're in right now. And people have no idea how big the trouble is. Uh, when, you, when, you, when you get the book, actually, parts three and four, uh, uh, chapters three and four, are available for free online right now. You can download them at ggsr21.com. I urge everybody to read chapter three first. It's easy and it's the way the rest of the book is written. Chapter four is one of the most important to understand and I needed it online so that I could refine it and update it. But if you can understand how currency is created, how you have been monetized, that every dollar in existence is an IOU, YOU. IOU, your future work hours, that you're going to use to pay taxes on the principal and interest on the bonds that they, the Federal Reserve bought by conjuring currency into existence. Um, uh, if you can understand all of that, so Ben Bernanke papered over this thing and then uh, I, the, the, what happened in 2020, 2021, 2022, uh, just this uh, bizarre world that we live in today uh, where um, democracy is the, the whole, our lives are threatened by a bunch of, uh, people that think they know more, uh, about how we should live our own lives than we do. Uh, and the censorship that we've seen, the, uh, shifts in power and, uh, how they, uh, badgered all of us, bullied all of us into shutting down the economy. Uh, the, 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 those are the things that really stuck out. It's 2008, not letting the markets clear. If they had, if the crash had continued and we got to where the stock market was undervalued, real estate was, uh, real estate was undervalued. The stock market wasn't. It, it went down to 
fair value, but then they papered over everything by creating, I mean, they've, they've added 50% to the currency supply. Uh, the chapter on the $7 trillion theft is uh, uh, something that people need to read to understand the wealth transfer. And if you can hold that in your mind while you're uh, reading the chapter on the, uh, not the, the chapter on reverse Robin Hoods, how the wealth that they've stolen has gone to a certain sector. And you can see, you know, I show uh, the different wealth percentiles. I show how much they have in deposits in their checking accounts. And it is mind boggling how much wealth transfer has happened since 2008. And it's all the fault. If we didn't have the central banks, it would be an entirely different world today. You, the, the big buildings in all of the downtown areas would have different names on them. It wouldn't be bank names. The financial sector wouldn't be such a large percentage of the economy. And banking would be doing its fundamental job where it is an actual service of the economy, where it fac facilitates transactions and helps everybody to grow our prosperity. It would be honest banking if we had honest money instead of dishonest currency. Uh, Mike Maloney, on that note, I will wrap it here. And I kept thinking, you know, these are conversations that should be happening in schools, right? Yes, but absolutely. Not. For uh, <laughs> children to start uh, learning about yeah. the how economic. It would be great by the time somebody t uh, leaves high school if they understood uh, how the economy works a little bit so they can see. Because the average person really does get sort of scammed and conned uh, by the system the way the system is laid out. It's not that any particular banker is evil. It's that the whole monetary system is this evil machine. And they're just a cog in this machine. They don't realize that they're part yeah. of this evil People thing. realize it too late. I mean, I, I met a super fan a few weeks ago, you know, in his, in his early 50s. And he was saying how, you know, shows like, like mine and others. Uh, well, he was talking about mine, so I'll, I'll, I'll promote that one. But he was saying how it really changed um, his life and, 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 and how he views money because he, he wasn't taught it by his parents. He wasn't taught it in school. He knew nothing. He didn't know what to do with his wealth. So um, thank you, right. Mike, for helping to educate the folks out there with this great book. Uh, I urge everyone to get it, The Great Gold and Silver Rush of the 21st Century. Hey, it was uh, over two years in the making, but well worth it. So thank you, Mike, for coming on yeah. the show. So just go to ggsr21.com and everything is there for free. All right. Well, I wish you uh, the best of luck and success with the book, Mike.